Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical house plants. So today is obviously going to be a continuation of the plant review series, as the title might suggest. Today I'm going to be talking about a very exciting plant, the Philodendron Jose Bueno. But before we get into the actual review itself, let's set down some ground rules. So if you're one of the regulars and you've come back for more, thanks for being here. At this point you know that for the progress bar down below you can skip to your favourite chapter if you want to. And if you are new and joining for the first time, welcome to the slight insanity that is this plant review series. And the rules predominantly are going to be for the new people joining. So the first thing I always say is there is no way of me making this plant review series, this specific video, unbiased. I mean it's my biased experience to my specific plant growing in my specific conditions, which at the moment is growing in a conservatory within the UK. And for example days like today where it's grey and miserable and we're at the very end of May, <laughs> at the time of filming anyway. But yeah. <laughs> That means that the humidity levels might be quite high in here, it might be quite low in the summer, the temperature might be really warm in the summer, it might be really cool in the winter. All of these things are the things that I have to deal with in my space whilst growing my plants, and specifically for this video, the Jose Bueno. So if your experiences vary from mine, and they probably will do because I would assume that most people wouldn't be growing in this exact scenario, please do consider sharing your experiences down below in the comments because it does help everybody else kind of look at, oh my experiences or my situation is very similar to theirs, let's see what those people did as well. So yeah, without further ado let's dive into it. So got the plant here, I'll bring it in for a bit of a close-up so you might be able to see what it looks like. So you can see all the different speckled variegations on the leaves and the newest leaf that's coming in will have a kind of more or less of a half moon situation. Based on what I'm seeing <laughs> with the white section I'm going to get the same situation that you get a lot of the times with sectoral variegations in plants where you get an absolutely massive green part and the entirely white part is diddy because there's not an awful lot that's left to unfurl here. It might swell up, I don't know. We shall wait and see but there is already a new growth point, I don't know whether or not that's going to come through, yeah you can kind of see the tip there that is coming through soon. Now I've had this plant hmm, I want to say a year, it might be two, the title will have it. It might actually be two because <laughs> this plant has struggled <laughs> and I'll dive into it throughout the video. But let me give you some background on how this specific plant came into my care. So this plant and the way that it came into my care is quite interesting. It came to me via a very dear planty friend that I've known for quite a few years now actually. I think this might have been the first time that we met face to face, I won't mention the person's name because I value their privacy, but this plant, if I'm not mistaken, was either an unrooted cutting or a slightly rooted cutting from their mother plant basically. And I'll see if I can add a picture here from my plant care app on what it looked like when I first got it. And there's a reason why this review has not happened sooner is because <laughs> I have struggled to get this plant happy and it's only just recently starting to get very very happy. For the longest period of time this plant had stayed in the single leaf plant club basically and it really was not loving life in any way or form. So this has taken a while to get to where it is and people might be questioning kind of saying well you've had it for a long time, how is it only the size that it is, especially based on <laughs> kind of the size of some of the other plants in my collection. This has been an on struggle bus for a while. This was one of a few plants that I got that came with that kind of exchange and I think pretty much everything else has done okay, barring one plant that has struggled almost as much as this and it's only just recently starting to kind of perk up specifically. And I'll see if I can grab it. 
This is one of several cuttings that has happened from that plant because it kept running and it kept not being happy. So I'll bring it in so you might be able to see. It probably doesn't look like an awful lot. I'll take my face off camera so you can maybe see it focus. This is the Monstera Oblica Columbia, if I'm not mistaken. So let me just put this down. There is a second one of those because of multiple runners and multiple propagates, and I think those are the two best scenarios at the moment. I have usually managed to get that plant to a three-leaf club. I haven't managed to get it past that point, so it's, it is where it is now, but it's been in some form or another in that state for a while now. <laughs> usually fails on me after that stage, so fingers crossed I might actually get a fourth leaf this time around. But back to the Jose Bueno, and I know that this is a plant that a lot of people were potentially looking into for a while, and it's one that maybe there's still some interest from people around, but I, I can usually tell how much of an interest a specific plant has based on how many people click through to see the review, generally speaking. And it's quite interesting with some of the update reviews that I've done so I'll give you an example. So for instance, the Philodendron Gloriosa, when it was first done, one of the first reviews, it had a lot of people that went and checked it out and it consistently was getting loads of people. The second review, granted it might be people that don't want to necessarily see an update review, there was a lot less. So I'm wondering whether or not some of that shine of that specific plant and others along the way has kind of diminished slightly. So we shall see kind of if this is one that people are still looking for. There was a point, and again, I'll touch on it in availability, where it was really sought after, basically. But I think a relatively uneventful background with this, really. And yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say for the background. Let's dive into the next section. So coming into a speed of growth for this one. <laughs> And I will temper this throughout most of this video, I will touch on the fact that it struggled as much as it did. I can talk about speed of growth now that it's settled, and to be fair, I would now <laughs> echo what most other people I've seen online are saying is that this plant is relatively fast, basically. That was not my experience for the largest time since I got it, because it really, really wasn't doing very much. But at the same time, and again, I think my review might be very different because, because of how much this is struggling, I do what a lot of you probably do and check online, check other YouTubers, see what their experience has been. And a lot of other people had said that this was one of kind of their easiest plants, I think, if I'm not mistaken correctly. If I'm not mistaken correctly. Oh, words on a morning and I've not had a full coffee yet. <sighs> But yeah, it's one of those plants that they found easy and they found fast. Hmm. Not the case with me again in the beginning, but I think it was a bit more about its conditions. And I'll talk a bit more on that in the next section, which is the ease of propagation. But for speed of growth, based on what it is now, if I benchmark it against the golden pot that's growing in here, like you all love when I do this because it gives you a bit of an indication. So if a golden pothos in here in the summer, so in the growing period, might get two or three leaves a month, at the moment, now that it's happy, this one will bring out a leaf or two leaves in a month. So, and we are coming into the growing season again now, and this was speeding up for a while in the kind of tail end of winter is when it really, I think, started to get a bit more comfortable. We're now at the tail end of May. It's done well, considering that I think at the very beginning of January, I still only had maybe one or two leaves on this plant. So there's something to be said about that. But now that it's kind of happier, it is faster. I will give it that. And it is growing roots relatively well, it's growing height relatively well, because this probably was only about this tall in general. So yes, fast, as long as it's happy, which kind of makes sense for most plants. So coming to ease of propagation, this is the bit that I'm going to dive into, the struggles that I've had with this plant. 
spoiler, I have not propagated this specific plant because it's been struggling for as much as it was. If I tried to propagate it, it would probably possibly kill both the mother plant and the propagate. <laughs> but as I mentioned at the very beginning, this, if I'm not mistaken, was a propagate. Even if it wasn't an unrooted cutting, I think it didn't have a huge amount of roots on it. And it was a plant, I don't think the original leaf is here, but that gives you a good indication of kind of what the original leaves would have been like. There wasn't an awful lot of irrigation, but because I knew, at least from what I'd seen, this, the, the pattern of irrigation is very reminiscent from what I've seen to the Thai constellation. Whether or not it's stable like the con Thai constellation, I think it might be, because I'm obviously now getting like large sectoral sections, and it's been increasing in its variegation for a while, then yes, there, there is that to kind of consider. But, so it didn't have an awful lot of variegation, so it wasn't the fact that I was trying to propagate uh, Philodendron Jose Bueno with half a white leaf and only half a green, which meant that it would have had half the energy potentially to pump into rooting. All this being said, I have tried different ways of propagating it for a long period of time. So I tried water, uh -uh. it didn't do very much and I think it started to get some root rot at some point and it was doing the best that it could and I then tried water with the tin foil in an opaque container like I used to do with my Monstera albos just to see if that was the problem, that it still wasn't kind of fond of. And the reason why I would have gone down the route of like water propagation is because these types of philodendrons, at least in my experience, the ones that have got the kind of sword-shaped leaves and the ones that can get quite large, generally speaking, they have significant aerial roots, so they work quite well as a whole for water propagation. This, and I will caveat this throughout this video because I know that people have had good experiences with this, did not do it for me. Yours might have been different, I'd be really curious if it was, do drop a comment down below, I would assume probably it was. I don't know what was happening with mine. But that didn't work. Then I tried it in a semi-hydro situation, so with, I think back then it was the choose upon. then I even tried it with the bigger, the coarser semi-hydro mix from the Soil Ninja guys. That still did not keep it happy. It's it was trying to grow some roots. By this point, like after all these different attempts, I had a bit of a root system, but nothing huge. I don't imagine the root, there was one root, maybe one branch, and it was probably only about this big for a plant that was considerably larger than just what the root system was at that point. So obviously the, the chance of failure from propagation is quite high then, because if you lose that one root, you're starting again from scratch with an already stressed out plant which was probably the case with this one. <laughs> it was just starting to bounce back <laughs> as the whole conservatory works were getting done, so I had to move it out of its condition, and I'm just like, oh, I need to, it's taken me this long to start getting this plant to be happy. I really hope it doesn't set it back. It didn't. You can see it's doing quite well. But, and if you haven't seen the conservatory update video, I will link it at the top as I usually do with these things. But, yeah, it did not like life for a long period of time. What changed for me? It's back in an aroid soil mix. I am actually, <laughs> for however much I really don't want to with some of my plants now, specifically philodendrons. I don't think I've had to move an anthurium ever back from a semi-hydro mix into an aroid soil mix one or two philodendrons out of this entire collection to be fair i've had to move back into soil and they're a lot happier basically and yeah so that was my big takeaway with this one if you're gonna propagate it the only thing i did not try with this and possibly could have done better but the problem that i was having with this and the problem i have a lot of the times with kind of unrooted or partially rooted cuttings that might do best in a uh, kind of prop box with damp sphagnum moss is when they're huge and they're quite sizable, the stem's quite large and the leaves are quite large, it takes up an awful lot of a propagation box. So a lot of the times I just don't do it. 
Should I have maybe tried it in Dam Sphagnum Moss in a pot without having it in a prop box? Maybe. You might have tried that and you might have had better experiences again. Let us all know down below in the comments. But yeah, this, this was a struggle to kind of get it happy. Might be just mine, but I'd be curious to see what you all say. So coming into availability for this one, and this is an interesting one because this plant, when it first came to a lot of people's attentions, and it was probably one or two YouTubers on here basically, that kind of brought this plant to everybody's attention, they they kind of did mention that it's quite pretty, it's got the variegation. I think if I'm not mistaken, is it the Mexicanum that's very similar? One that is definitely very similar, which is a lot more expensive, is the Philodendron Eels Manii, I think. It's similar leaf structure, similar type of variegation. I think the variegation might fade in a different way or it doesn't fade because with this one, I'm trying to see if I can show you. Um, so that, again, I'll show you that old leaf again. That was a creamy variegation like the top, but in my experience, at least with this, it does fade down eventually to like a, a more kind of lighter green rather than a cream. You can see here some of the fresher leaves. You can still see the, the creamy variegation. <laughs> that is not a white dot of variegation. That is the paint that's on the ceiling of the conservatory. Some of it might have splattered on some of the plants. I got off most of it, but so far it's been non-toxic, so I'm... Oh, oh. Um, you know, it's busyness at this point of the time. Between this, the garden, and the allotment. <laughs> Summer is a busy time for me and a lot of you from what I know, because we a lot of us have got large collections. So I feel your pain, you feel my pain, we're all good. But yeah, availability with this one, it was one that wasn't that easy to find, at least here in the UK when it first kind of came to people's awarenesses. And it has got easier, I think, from what I can see, to find versions of this plant, either full plants or propagates of this, places like eBay, some retailers, usually online, would have something like this. I've seen a couple that have come in, and my benchmark is I've got a garden center and I don't know kind of what the equivalent might be in somewhere like the States or Canada. It's not quite a big box store, but it's maybe, I'm assuming, maybe. Oh, my American and Canadians followers are probably going to be like screaming at me in the comments. I'm assuming you might have garden centers, possibly, or something of, of the like. It might be plant nurseries. Maybe that's what you guys call them. I don't know. Tell me down below. Uh, this is a rambly video, I do apologise, but I'm in a bit of mood today in terms of rambling, so bear with me. <laughs> so yeah, I've seen it in my local one, and when I see it in my local one, it means that there are some flushes of it that are coming in from the kind of nurse plant nurseries in the Netherlands, so it's become a bit more available. And again, times when I see plants like this and others that are considered kind of rare at times or difficult to find in the market and then I start seeing it in some places like that or some of the other stores, plant stores either online or physically, I would imagine that they're relatively straightforward to keep happy if they're getting pumped out slowly from the European, predominantly I think in Europe it tends to be in the Netherlands, the plant nurseries here, rather than them being shipped over from uh, Central America or the Far East. So there is that to be said. And back when it was first kind of in most people's awareness, I think this was fetching either very high double digits, very, very high double digits, or very, very low triple digits, whilst I try not to decapitate <laughs> my philodendron gloriosum. <laughs> But yeah, so it was it was kind of sitting around there. I think seeing it now, it's definitely cheaper than that. So it's definitely not in the high double digits, possibly the mid double digits for a sizable plant, probably no different than this. <laughs> I can say I got it before most people, but it I got it to the stage that most people can buy it for relatively relatively affordable <laughs> at the moment, you know. Um and it is one of those things 
that it has come down in price, which is a good thing. It means more people could potentially purchase this plant. The people that have been here for a while know what I'm doing when I'm looking at this, because every time I pick up a plant, I'm just like, is that a pest? It isn't. So yeah, it's become a bit more available. The reality with this one, at least in my opinion, is I don't think that many people are necessarily aware of it, or if they are aware of it, they're maybe not that keen to get it, or that desperate to get it. I always benchmark these things against like the Gloriosum, which there was a craze and everybody was trying to get a Gloriosum, or a Monstera Albo, or now currently and still is the Monstera Thai Constellation, which is quite, it can be challenging to find sometimes. I don't think this was ever at that level of kind of hype. I do, however, think with something like this, if there is a plant like the Eels Manii, which is quite pricey, well, it's an interesting one because does that mean potentially that more people would wait and save a bit more money and get that plant, or would they get this as a cheaper dupe, basically? I don't know, but to be fair, neither one of those two plants, as far as I'm aware, has a massive wait list of people that want to get them. Granted, the Eels Manii might be because of the price point. And to be fair with that one, from what I can remember, it was a year or two ago. It is a heck of a lot cheaper now. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about availability. Let's move on. Pests with the Jose Bueno. This is an interesting one because, as I said, it's been on the struggle bus for a while, so I've been a bit more aware of it. So potentially if I would have seen pests, I would have dealt with them a bit faster. Has this had mealybugs at some point? Yes, but when I say mealybugs, I mean one or two, and I was able to remove them relatively kind of easily. Has this had spider mites at some point? I think yes. Has this had the occasional thrip? Also yes, I think. But most of these things did not kind of stress out the plant. And I will clarify on the thrip situation that I'm not even 100% sure that it was thrips at that point. But none of this really set this plant back. Also considering how stressed it was, it did okay, basically. And the reality with this is, I don't think it's entirely kind of a pest-free plant. But I don't think, at least in my experience, this isn't one that a lot of the pests that we normally get in house plants tend to gravitate towards this too, too much. So into accessories and care for this one. <laughs> I've touched on this on a lot of the other sections now, but I can talk what's worked. Arrowed soil mix for me, it had to be, because I can see the, the roots are a lot happier, says me whilst I dig in trying to find a root potentially. Has it filled up this entire pot? No. I find this quite interesting because I think when I was looking at this, this was supposed to be one of those plants that is a very vigorous kind of grower in terms of roots and, and height and everything like that. The roots took forever with me. Yes, it is better in an aroid mix. Would I try something like a semi-hydro again with this? No. Would I try propagating in water? No. Does it have a couple of janky support sticks? Yes. So janky support sticks for the win with this one. Would it maybe benefit from having something like a moss pole? Possibly. It's one that, yes, the support sticks would be good. The moss pole would be good. Would it benefit from higher levels of humidity? Based on what I'm seeing with this plant, no. It's only ever lived in here, but it's really interesting. Plants with any form of irrigation, especially when the conservatory build was happening and they had to get moved out and moved back in, those plants, majority of them that were in here with the high humidity levels showed some form of unhappiness on their kind of more variegated sections as in crisping and browning and all of these things. By the time I brought them back in, they're just about stabilized. Now, this one, even though it was struggling, did not show any of that. So there is that to be said. So I don't think it needs super high humidity levels. Is it a good idea to kind of keep an eye on this for pests? Yes. 
Is this a good idea to have this out in the household condition? Possibly yes. In terms of light, this has had everything from low light to medium light to high light. Because when something is struggling, you try a lot of different things and see what would work. This is in very high light, bright indirect, right at the top of my conservatory, underneath the kind of painted glass. So it's getting very high light at the moment. We've not had an awful lot of very, very sunny days here at the moment, so it's not really showing any signs of distress. Are some of the leaves bleaching ever so slightly on the margins and getting a bit lighter? Yes. Is it stressing the plant out? No. Has it grown like a weed since then? Yes. So I do think that this would appreciate definitely bright indirect rather than those kind of medium or lower light levels. And I think the reason why I tried those is because I did see some people had success with this more so in the lower light situation. That's not been my experience with this. Does it then mean that I need to water more frequently? Yes. At this particular moment in time, roughly based on the weather and based on where it is, this is getting watered every three to four days in my conditions. So there is that to be said. And also this does get that kind of fertilized water that I do for most of my plants because of all the semi-hydro that I have, which is very, very weak solution of water with my kind of beloved liquid gold leaf fertilizer. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say on accessories in care on this. So coming into final thoughts, this is an interesting plant. And let, let me start the, what I usually do before I go off on the tangent. Knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant, would I get this plant? Honestly, probably not. Probably not. And it's, it's less to do with the plant itself and kind of how it is. Maybe a bit, um, but it's more on the, the struggles that I had with this specific plant. Also, again, the reality is here, this isn't a plant that I was ever really looking to add to my collection. It, it kind of came to me, as I said, through that exchange with that individual, and I was happy to have it, but it wasn't a plant that I would have necessarily gone out of my way to get into my collection. Not saying I was kind of ungrateful or anything like that for getting this plant. I have liked it and loved it eventually since being in my collection. But just you know what I mean? It's it's one of those things that if you didn't go out of your way and you didn't desperately want a plant and it kind of came to your care of it, it's like, yes, I will care for it and I do like it and I enjoy it. But is it a plant that I've been kind of lusting over for a long time? <laughs> but yes. And then obviously the, the struggles that I had with this. Had I have gotten an established plant or one that was happy already and wasn't struggling and didn't do all these things and it had grown like a weed for me, would I maybe be singing a different tune? Probably. Probably. There's no way of removing my experiences with this plant when answering the question of would I get this knowing what I know now and I didn't have it. So there is that to be said. And, there, and that's the point that I wanted to make is the fact that sometimes getting a plant and just having that plant, if it wasn't one that you really, really were kind of wanting to get in, do you sometimes fall in love with plants like that? Yes, and it's happened to me a few times where it was just a bit like, Meh. and I'm thinking now the um, Equigenera order, the first Equigenera order that I did, and I had a filler plant that was the Villanuarum, the Anthurium Villanuarum, and the Philodendron heterocraspidum, which I'd never heard of before. I was just, eh, let's see. Love those plants dearly now. They both surprised me on how much I fell in love with them just by seeing them, basically. This was one that didn't do that for me. And there's, I'm sure that's happened to a lot of people when they get a plant and it's just a bit like, oh, everybody else has this. And I will touch on that in a different video. Um, everybody else has it. Maybe I should get it and see what it's like and see if I like it. Most of the times I find it does, doesn't always pan out. Sometimes it does, as I've given a couple of examples, but for me at least, this is my experiences. Now scoring this plant <laughs> from zero, one being the worst and 10 being the best. And it's interesting, especially based on what I just said now, what score would I give this plant? 
Had I have not gone through that entire process and got a plant that wasn't struggling to begin with and I didn't have all those issues with it, and I just got this plant, I would probably score this a seven or an eight, solidly. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty plant, it's nice with the variegation. It, now that it's happy, it doesn't tend to give me too many problems, it doesn't have too many pest issues. If I was to score it based on my experiences and everything I had to go through to get the plant to this stage, I probably wouldn't give it more than a two or a three. But that was based on my experiences. Based on the plant on its own, it's much higher. But based on my experiences, it's it's I couldn't give it more than that. Yes, I am enjoying it currently, but it is what it is. So <laughs> this is a bit of a mixed bag and a bit of a cookie video, I think, for me, uh, because unfortunately I usually film on the weekend. We had a bank holiday weekend here. The allotment took an awful lot of my time, so I couldn't do any filming. So I should be working because it's a Tuesday morning, but I am filming because I love all of you so, so much. And I know that you do look forward to these videos. So yeah, that was my thoughts and my review on the Philodendron Jose Bueno. Disagree or agree? Let me know down below. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon, and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.